Do you know how to recognize emerald ash borer damage? This invasive pest has swept through our central Missouri woods recently, killing nearly all of our ash trees. We knew it was present in the region, but had no idea it would hit us so hard and fast. We've now had a personal crash course in recognizing signs of borer activity and in dealing with the aftermath. We get the sense that a lot of people in the region don't yet recognize the scope of borer effects or even what to look for. For example, current observations on platforms like iNaturalist vastly understate the actual scope of the problem. As of January 2024, there were only two iNaturalist reports in all of northern Arkansas, but we saw extensive effects in the lower Buffalo River region in fall 2023. So today on Ozark Outsider, we're going to share some of our hard-earned experiences and give you a crash course in identifying emerald ash borer damage. The emerald ash borer was first discovered in Missouri in 2008, but became widespread as of 2020. It was first confirmed in Arkansas in 2014, and has been spreading there as well. 2023 was the first year we confirmed borer effects on our rural property, as trees like this quickly went from green canopies to ghostly snags. But what specifically is going on? Emerald ash borers are small beetles that lay eggs in the crevices of ash bark. When the larvae hatch, they chew through the bark and sapwood, disrupting the tree's ability to transport water and nutrients. Adults eventually emerge from distinctive D-shaped holes. We've personally never seen an adult during their summer active phase, but the evidence of their presence is clear. And finding it starts with recognizing ash trees in the first place. A key characteristic of ashes is their opposite, rather than alternate, branching pattern. Aside from ashes, only a few other full-sized tree species in the Ozark region have an opposite branching pattern, including maples and box elder. During leaf-on, the opposite compound leaves of the ash can confirm identification. When seeking borer damage, Look for trees starting to turn a pale yellow-white color as the bark dies and flakes off. This starts as mangy-looking patches and proceeds to nearly the whole tree. Look for piles of lost bark mounted around the base of the trees, some of which may be produced by increased woodpecker activity. Look for those characteristic D-shaped holes where adult beetles emerged after their larva chewed up the tree. Look for abundant side shoots, a sign that an unhealthy tree is trying to recover. This could be a sign of longer infestation. On our own property, we've observed that young trees a few inches in diameter seem to be dying the most rapidly, while bigger trees take longer, but are now almost all affected. Years before we observed clear evidence of emerald ash borers, we had some unhealthy ash trees hosting these fungi, which cause heart rot but we're not sure of the relationship between pre-existing fungal effects and the current wave of borer infestations. But the rapid spread of emerald ash borer in our region has widespread consequences. Homeowners or land managers may have to deal with a pulse of newly dead trees overhanging buildings, roads, or trails. Removing affected trees is not cheap in terms of time or money. Another cost comes from the potential loss of ash-based forest products estimated as millions of dollars by the Missouri Department of Conservation. It's now illegal to transport ash outside affected counties, undercutting its commercial value as firewood and other materials. Ecological costs are even less clear. What microecologies are lost when ashes vanish? Can mosses, insects, and other life hosted by ash trees re-establish elsewhere? What replaces ash trees in our ecosystems? and our fall color palette will be less rich without the contribution of ash trees. What can you do? Well, not much. The only known treatment involves applications of insecticides, which not only comes with broader ecological risk, but isn't practical at a landscape scale. If you're a land manager like us, you can work to remove affected trees and salvage some value from them locally. We'll be heating with salvaged ash for years. It's also tough to decide when to remove trees. Do you take an aggressive approach, removing any tree with a hint of infestation in hopes of breaking the life cycle? Or do you wait until later, hoping a few trees might show some genetic resistance, but allowing more reproductive cycles for the borers? And finally, 
we have to think about how to manage areas where large numbers of ash trees are vanishing. How do we keep these new canopy openings from becoming thickets of invasive plants? This isn't a happy story, but it's one worth being familiar with. Next time you're out hiking in the Ozarks or elsewhere, it's worth knowing how to recognize trees dying from emerald ash borers, if only to mourn their loss. <laughs>